Brent Porcio, topvelocity.net at the at top velocity hashtag pitching tips show version two. We're back at it. Just search on YouTube the at top velocity hashtag pitching tips show. The last one somewhere in like 2015. So it's pretty cool to do kind of like another season uh, many years after. Uh, I'm sure I look like I've aged a lot. So I'm excited to do the show. It's my birthday today. I'm 45. But that being said, what do we do on this show? We take questions and we answer your questions. So if you have questions, post them at the bottom of the video uh, and ask your question and hopefully we can get it on the show. If you haven't already, subscribe, follow, like us, share, tell everybody. Man, people throwing baseballs at me out here. All right, so uh, let, let's see, let's, let's get started today. What's our first question? It says, assuming I work out every day properly in order to increase velo, how long should it take to see improvements and how much improvement should I expect? I get this question a lot. At the end of the day, if you're gonna come and invest a lot of time and money here to train, you wanna know how long does it take to get a return? I get, all, I get that, and at the end of the day, this is all about a return. It's all about a result, and we wanna get a result. And at the end of the day, everybody thinks it's all about velocity. Yeah, that's the big flashy number that everyone sees and they get most excited about, but it's not all about velocity. Velocity is really the foundation of being an elite pitcher. So think about it, if you throw hard, you're giving the hitter less time to react, that's gonna affect everything else. You know, he's gonna have to always wait for that pitch or be ready for that pitch. So therefore, your other pitches can be more deceiving because he's more on edge because he knows he has less time to react because you're a hard throwing pitcher. And also that too, all the spin that comes with throwing harder, it typically, Studies show when you increase velocity, you increase spin, that's gonna affect other pitches. So what's gonna happen is now all of a sudden your slider, instead of being 72 is 82, or maybe 91, I don't know. It, so everything's gonna get better. Velocity is a foundation of being an elite pitcher because of all the things it brings with it. At the end of the day too, we gotta not just be able to throw hard a few times, you gotta do it consistently over and over and over again. And that's another big part here. But at the end of the day, we are top velocity because that's really the fun part. That's the exciting part and that's what everybody gets excited about, but there is a lot, lot more to it. So because of that, it takes, it takes time, guys. It takes time to get improvements. And at the end of the day, everybody's different. For example, some guys are gonna come in with more challenges than other guys. You just have to accept that, guys. When you walk through the door here on a 3X Velocity camp, you gotta accept that you might have more challenges to get to where you wanna get or make a five to 10 mile an hour jump than the other guy. And therefore you are gonna have to work harder. You're gonna have to understand this better. You're gonna have to apply it better. So you, not everybody is the same. So that's why when you first come to the camps, we got evaluations because of an evaluation up front is our way of saying, hey, this is you, these are your problems. This is what we have to overcome. And, and you're here and elite guys here, and this is what separates us. And this is where we have to go. So. We don't really know how long it's gonna take for you until after that evaluation. So if you haven't already, search for the 3X uh, biometric evaluations uh, or analysis uh, on, on my YouTube or my Instagram and watch them and, and go through it. And then you'll start getting an understanding of how this works and ultimately you can apply it to yourself. And more than likely you might get the understanding of, wow, I think you know this might take me a month. This might take me four months. This type might take me you know, a couple of off seasons to get to. Whatever it may be, you still should be excited. You're gonna get better in a program like we have at Top Velocity. So that is always a great question, guys. But like I said, it's gonna be different from everyone. But we guys, we have had the, the 10 day, the three day, 10 mile an hour jump. We've had that happen. Now, that's not a common thing. More common would be the three, four month improvement, right? All right, so next question, here we go. Do you have any tips on how to not be nervous when pitching? I just started, I'm pretty good with my accuracy, but when I get to full count, I throw a ball. I'm new to baseball, any tips would help. Hey, nerves is the name of the game. It's everyone goes through it, everyone experiences. Once again, some people are better at it than others. But what are the things that helped you better with your nerves? And I'm a guy who, a high energy guy, impulsive guy, you know, I like being a relief pitcher better than a starter because I like coming out at any time, just being thrown out there. Um, because 
I, I didn't like thinking, sitting there and as a starter and thinking about it and going over for the four or five days before I did it. I didn't like that. I, I set myself up a little bit too much. So, the, so for someone like me, if you're someone very impulsive, it would be good to desensitize the situation, meaning put yourself in similar situations as much as you possibly can. Constantly put pressure on yourself. If you're with your buddies, if you're in practice in your own training, constantly put pressure on yourself to perform. That more you do that, the more desensitized you'll come, and then when you're in those game situations, you'll be used to it. Guys, that's really how it works. When you see guys having a lot of success in the World Series and professional baseball, they played 160, 100, you know, 30 plus games. So, of course, they're going to be a lot more even keel, more composed in those high pressure situations. They've been there so many times. So, you just probably haven't put yourself in those situations enough. And you can do that just by challenging yourself every day. That's a way to do it. Another way to do it is to be doing the reps. Even if you're not challenging yourself every day, you're doing the reps as consistently as you can to where it's more autonomous, to where you don't have to think about it. It's just something you've done so much, your body just naturally, we call naturally or subconsciously, can just shut up and go through it. And quiet your brain in those moments. Thinking more actually can make it worse. So quiet your brain and let the autonomous action of your movement uh, play, do its thing. If you sit there and you try to disrupt that by throwing dialogue into it, oh, I need to get it on the left side of the plate, I make sure I get it down, and you overemphasize it, it, it can change the, the, so, you know, the, the natural way of doing it that you've worked so hard to be consistent at. So be careful overthinking it. That's the saying of overthinking or overemphasizing what needs to be done. You've, you've already done the work. At the end of the day, when you get to those high pressure situations, you wanna know you've already done the work and now it's just time to let the work pay off. Just quiet your brain and let it happen. Or you need to ch challenge yourself more. You're just, you're not in that situation enough and your nerves are purely on the fact of, I'm not here enough, I'm not used to this enough. I, you know, this is, this is something, it feels awkward, it feels new. I hope I, hope I have success, because that's what really anxiety is. Anxiety is fear of the future, you know, concerns of the future. So if I go into something and I've done it so many times and I'm like, there's a good chance this is going to happen because I've done it so many times. You don't have that anxiety of the future, but I've never been there before. And all of a sudden you're like, you know, I've got to throw this strike in this key part of the situation. And if I don't, everything, all these horrible things are going to happen. And you've never been there, even been there enough. Then that's where the anxiety comes from because you don't have a lot of confidence because you've never been there enough that it's going to happen. So guys, the things would be, be more consistent at the reps that need to be applied to make an autonomous movement on say that pitch in the outside corner that you might more than likely gonna have to throw in a high pressure situation. Challenging yourself more often every day so you constantly are desensitized to the pressure. Uh, you're just used to it because you've done it so much. Uh, that's another way to do it. And the other thing too is in those moments, try to stay as positive as you can. That's, that's probably the last thing we give you, like work, make sure you are as positive as you can. Every negative thought that comes in your brain, grab it quickly and reverse it. So if the, the thought is, man, I, 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 hope, I, I hope I don't miss my, my spot, stop and go, okay, reverse, change that, I'm gonna hit my spot. So reverse all that negative thought into positive thought, and that'll be another key thing, because your body just acts out what you tell it to do. At the end of the day, it's all your body does, it acts out what you tell it to do. So if you keep telling it to do what you want, and, and you keep that focus there, more than likely it happens, so stay positive. All right, so those were some great questions. If you have questions to have on the show, post them in the videos below, and ultimately we'll get yours on the show, and like and follow us, and I'm, I'm glad you guys are following the show. I hope you like this version too, and we'll see you next time. Bye.